Hey guys, um, I'm sorry it's been a while since I last did a video, but unfortunately um, last week I wasn't in the best of it, feeling the best really, because on the Monday I had my first um, COVID jab, and uh, it was the AstraZeneca. And uh, obviously, as we all know, there's been a bit of controversy where certain countries have banned it because of so-called claims of blood clotting. Not at all. It's all unfounded. Um, yes, unfortunately, I would say I've had some side effects with it, but it is to be expected because it's a vaccine. Um, and obviously a very uh, strong one because uh, you need something to, to combat this uh, pandemic and ensure that we're all safe and everybody, all our loved ones are safe. Um, it did leave me knocked for six for about four days um, whilst my system was trying to adjust to it. But I'm glad to say that I'm okay now. Um, and that's basically why I haven't done a lot of videos just lately. Um, in the past week. Uh, so there you go. But the main reason I'm doing this video is because sadly... Um, not only have we lost uh, one well-known character of the motorsport field, uh, but we've lost a second one today from what was released this morning, and that is the young, very talented uh, German car saloon racer, um, Sabine Schmitz, and she was also a fellow uh, former Top Gear presenter. Um, and she does actually hold the lap record for the Nordschleife at the Nürburgring, which has still not been broken. Uh, I think it was about nine minutes or something over a 16 kilometer track. So that is quite impressive. And I have seen some of the footage of Sabine doing that on Top Gear and the way she drove that car. Wow. <laughs> Honestly. Um, and in her later years, she was still doing little tours and drives around the Nürburgring Nordschleife for um, people who go there for a track day. Um, and in fact, as a tribute to her, I've actually posted one of those videos that was on YouTube on my Facebook page. Um, I've also done one to the other person concerned, which is the well-known and well-loved Murray Walker. Um, so yes, um, they were both uh, well known in the motorsport uh, fraternity. Um, more so in regard to Murray because he does have the distinction of having a well known Second World War record as a Sherman tank commander in the British Army. Um, his father was a late Peter Walker, uh, who was a well known bike champion. Um, he did try and follow his father's footsteps in regard to that, but wasn't so successful. Um, so he then, after the war, basically looked at getting into broadcasting, for which it went from strength to strength. Uh, initially at motocross uh, with motorbikes, uh, he did commentate on various uh, motorbike races, as well as other saloon car races, uh, the BTCC. Uh, British Tour Car Racing, uh, also um, I think it was Motocross, Motorsport Cross um, as well um, as Bike Racing and War, was War, sorry I'm getting tongue tied, was more well known as Mr Formula One um, for years and uh, obviously the West, I mean he used to, after um, James Hunt retired around about 19... 79 for Formula One, um, commentate beside James for many years until James is untimely passing in 1993. And uh, on one of the first times they commentated together, um, it was well known that James wasn't the most easiest man to know. But apparently they only had one microphone between the two of them and at times um, Murray would certainly stamp his authority with James. <laughs> So yeah, and I think from that point onwards, they both had a very mutual respect for one another. Um, Murray also uh, was well known for some marketing uh, as regards to catchphrases to well-known products on advertisements through the years. Um, so that was another string to his bow. And um, I 
not so many years ago, I think he brought out an autobiography about himself and um, I've read the book and it's thoroughly entertaining, especially on the chapter with his well-known hiccups he uh, made now and again on sport commentating known as Murrayisms. And then when he was in his sort of mid-80s, he did a lap around Silverstone with his uh, then fellow uh, commentator, Martin Brundle, in a two-seat McLaren. I think it was about 86 at the time. And uh, he was like a kitty in a candy store. Absolutely loved it. And um, admittedly, in the last year, he was um, obviously getting very frail and uh, was in a nursing home. Um, uh, but he also managed to get over a bout of cancer, uh, throat cancer as well, apparently. And uh, his wife was near him at the time when he passed away. So, you know. But 97 is a damn good innings for a, such an active life. And uh, I have a slight association with Murray in the fact that I uh, sort of grew up with him, uh, with his sports commentating. <coughs> uh, motorsport commentating more particularly the Formula 1 and my dad used to love what, sitting and watching and listening to him as well um, and uh, it's all followed on from there and I had the utter pleasure of meeting Murray and having a chat with him at Goodwood in 1999 and uh, I have to say he was an absolute gentleman um I was I was coming through the um, paddock. Um, I saw Murray on his own, and I thought, well, here's my opportunity to go and chat to him and get an autograph, and I did. And then he looked back, saw me, and sort of questioned. He said, "Well, did you not see the sign behind you?" And I said, "No, I didn't, Murray." And he said, "Well, if you look behind you, it will indicate." And I looked around, and it said, "Drivers and press are only permitted to walk through." And I was like, "Oh!" And I made my apologies to Murray, and he said, "No, that's quite all right." He said, "That's come over." He said, "I'll uh, sign your book for you." And um, I was feeling quite nervous, but Murray in the brief chat that we had together made me feel at ease um we were like two well i suppose we were like two kids in a candy store that day to be honest with the way we were chatting to each other about formula one and obviously at that time also it was there was a lot of speculation about damon hill retiring from formula one and he, he did give me a little insight to say that indeed um damon was going to hang up his boots at the end of the year um, uh, but I always remember him with his enthusiastic um, sort of commentary and his, his knowledge was second to none um, everybody in the field of Formula 1 loved and respected him uh, right from the drivers to the team principals to the head of Formula 1 they all held him up in the highest regard. And even at Goodwood, he was well known. He was approachable. Um, he would go there every year, as well as the um, second meeting that they have at Goodwood um, as well. And, uh, yeah, he was quite a guy, actually. I mean, as I say, I had the pleasure of meeting Murray. He made me feel at ease. And then even at the end of that conversation, I said, look, I don't want to keep your day any longer. I expect you get so many people want your attention. And he said, no, Stuart, it's quite all right. He said, it's part of, for the course, he said. And, uh, you know, it's just nice to meet people such as yourself who are so enthusiastic about the sport. And he said, not only that, it's nice to chat, sit and it's nice to have a chat with a fellow sport enthusiast as well. So, you know, that really made me a day. And with that, we, he gave me a hand, firm handshake, wish me well. And, uh, you know, he was, he was a lovely, lovely man. Lovely man. Absolutely lovely man. He really was. And uh, I think, to be honest with you, the world is going to be a bit poorer without Murray being around. But no doubt he's up there giving it his all on the microphone with all the late drivers such as Sir Sterling Ross, John Surtees, um, many others before that, Fangio, as well as the late great Ayrton Senna, <coughs> and more recently 
Jill Bianchi um, was apparently he, Martin spoke to him recently about a week before he died and said he was not feeling well but how is everyone how's it what's going on in Formula One who's who do you reckon's going to win it this year you know he was there you go it was enthusiasm he was still there so you know he was still enthusiastic about the sport and everything you know so yeah you know rest in peace both of you uh, Sabine rest in peace and Murray rest in peace sir so there you go so I'm going to end this video now I've been waffling on for about 10 minutes I just wanted to make a little t uh, tribute to them both um, it's more tragic than the fact with Sabine she was so young but Murray he had such a fulfilled life and uh, well I don't think either of them are going to be forgotten quite frankly um, and I hope Sabine's record stays a long long time before it's broken um, so yeah anyway uh, I'm going to finish there and you know, may they both rest in peace, bless them. So there you go. Anyway, what I shall be doing soon, because this arrived today, is an inbox review of the Border Models Tiger One early production. Now I know Greg Riley's already done one, and I think he's in the process of building it, or he's built it. Um, but I'm gonna do my little interpretation. I've had a quick look at this. Um, it does look a lovely kit, I have to say, and it's quite full in the box. Um, they've even got tarps in it and everything, so it's it's a real cracker of a kit by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, I'll be putting that up in the next few days uh, for you to you guys to watch. Uh, but after that, I'm not so sure I'll be doing so many more videos from now on uh, because. My work colleagues have gradually been called back to work for obviously when we reopen on the 12th of April and I'm expecting a phone call from my management at any time to go back. So if you don't see any more videos for a while or hear from me, that's the reason why, because when it comes back to going to work, it takes a lot of my time up. So there you go. Uh, the only reason I've done these videos after the last four months is basically We've all been in lockdown, so I thought I'd keep you guys entertained. So there you go. So if you don't see from me in a while after this next video, that's the reason why. All right. Anyway, stay safe. Keep well. Um, you know, just keep an eye on your loved ones and more essentially your elderly uh, relatives, etc. Or elderly neighbours. Make sure they're okay. And... Uh, Wash your hands and wear a mask if you should go out, okay? Anyway, until then, take care, stay safe, get kicked crazy, and I will speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.